Ah, what am I doing with my life? Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. How nice of you to join me. I am Sir Nicholas. The man behind the camera is Sir Daniel. But you can call me that one guy, and you can call Daniel... Well, you can call Daniel what he is. Nothing. You're probably wondering what it is I'm actually doing here. Well, I am here to introduce our lovely works that we have produced just for you, kind viewer. Now, I'm sure that in the doldrum of your daily life, there was a day where you sat down in defeat, looked upon your game library as you said to yourself, I have nothing to play. Surely there must be a game out there worth playing that you haven't already played. You've probably played your cards, you've played your guitars, you've played your gals, you've played your... Whatever the hell this is. So, what are you gonna do? Play a PC game? <laughs> <laughs> no. Ah, your crappy PC takes forever to load, forget about it. But that is where I come in. Because in the massive population of games in today's world, there was something that you missed. There was some unknown treasure hidden away in the store shelves or underneath the bargain bin, just waiting to be discovered and played by the likes of you. I am here to reveal that game for you and tell you whether it is a diamond in the rough or just a piddle of your time, a shilly-shally, a fritter away of your... Who the fuck wrote this? Hey, you done that script yet? Uh... Anyway, we do hope that you enjoy these reviews as we put an erroneous amount of time into creating them. Oh, and speaking of erroneous, I think this introduction has gone on quite long enough to become erroneous, don't you think? <laughs> oh, I don't even know what erroneous means. Anyhow, enjoy watching me magically grow long hair and physically strain myself for your entertainment. This is That One Guy's Review for Mirror's Edge. Hey, I'm that one guy. Yeah, the one who used to sit at the back of the class and throw paper airplanes at your head. Hey, you guys like parkour, right? Cause I sure as hell do.
Now, I'm no professional by any means, but just look at that. Look at it. That's hardcore. Hardcore, 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 hardcore. Just the way they move, the way they do the things they do, it's insane. It's crazy. Look at them. We can do that. Human beings are capable of doing those kinds of things. Granted, you'd need to follow a tight regimen, but you know, we're capable of doing those kinds of things. I mean, if you ask me, parkour is for the sole purpose of getting from point A to point B in the coolest, most show-offish way possible. Or wait, is that the other thing? Oh, I don't know, I can't do either. Obviously, this is sweet video game material. It's been used as a mechanic in games like Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, or Assassin's Creed, but those were never really built as parkour games. If only there was a game where you could feel like a parkour artist, where it was built around the art of parkour, where you had no boundaries and the freedom to do whatever you wanted. <laughs> yeah, you know which game I'm talking about. Free running! Oh yeah, you saw this one coming. Now I've heard some people say that this game is stiffer than a class trip to the morgue, but I don't believe that for a second. I gotta tell you, I've never played a more brilliant game than this. In fact, I don't think I'll ever play another game again. Free running is absolutely stellar. It's a Come on, what is this? I'm in the middle of a review here. What? A mirror's edge? No, no, I'm reviewing free running. What is it? No, 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 no. I don't care what my boss says. This is my show. I'll review free running if I feel like it. Now, I... What? Speak up, Sonny Jim. I can't understand a word you're... No, no! Oh, oh, no. This is Mirror's Edge, everybody. So Mirror's Edge is one of them games that uh, came out way back when, and I still feel it needs more recognition. It may have a fan base, but I always thought it could get a lot bigger. Why do I feel so strongly about it? Because I just love the idea of this game. When I played it, it was fresh, it felt new, and it felt like something I could really sink my teeth into. Despite what other people tell you, this game is more different than your common first person shooter, mainly because the game is based around the parkour awesomeness. Okay, so I'm gonna try not to gush and give you a professional and consistent review of Mirror's Edge. This game fucking rocks! All kidding aside though, let's start this review with the worst part of the game, and that's the story. It's really nothing that you haven't already seen before, although it is kind of interesting. You play as Faith, and she's what's called a runner. Runners are pretty much couriers delivering info or some stupid stuff like that, I don't know. They're pretty underground using the buildings to get around and be cool. Why? Because government's being all oppressive and stuff. Why? Because government sucks! <laughs> So all's well in the world of running, until Faith finds out her sister has been framed in a political murder! So in an attempt to clear her sister's name and find this mysterious killer person, Faith needs to use all her skills to... Well, continue running. Because to be honest, you don't really give a crap about the story, all you care is where the next level is taking place. Not to say that it's bad, I mean, it's not like, just cause too bad. I mean, they try to actually say something with the story as opposed to writing whatever schlock for the purpose of set pieces. If anything, I can say that it's poor in story, it's got predictable crap, and... What's up with these cutscenes? I mean, points for creativity, sure, but... I don't know, something's off here. It's bothering you too, I know it. But thankfully, this leads to the best part of the game. According to Faith, runners see the city in a different way, as anything and everything could be used to keep the flow of your run going. 
So no, those pipes haven't just been painted red by the city planners for your convenience. That is actually your runner vision! This serves to kind of lead you through the level, showing you key objects in the environment you can use for your parkouring needs. Now, I hear you thinking, oh come on, that's holding your hand completely through the game. Where's the freedom? Where's the freedom? Okay, yeah, it was kind of stupid for them not to give the option to unredify everything right from the get-go, but when you already beat the game and play on the hard difficulty, all the red will be gone. So, there's some fair replay value there. But I think it's cool that later levels try to psych you out with the colors, which keeps you on your toes. So is this game just about running? Well, no, you get into some pretty sick fights, although they can be far apart. When you fight dudes, you gotta pick them off one by one, and you have this sweet slow-mo button for disarms and doing cool stuff, like a jump kick or a nutcracker. You think it'd be weird for the people that did the Battlefield games, but I really have to give them some respect. You can pick up guns, but you can't carry them with you, which only adds emphasis that this game is about running, not fighting. Some people call this a poor mechanic in the game that shouldn't even been there to begin with, but hey, when you're a game dev in today's world, you gotta have balls to stick to your guns and make something different. Hell, there's even a level later on where you gotta take out all these floors of dudes. Nothing's stopping you from picking up a gun and shooting them, man. Go right ahead. Granted, you only get one magazine per gun, but I think that makes it kind of interesting. Again, it's not about guns, it's about runs. By the way, did I mention this game is about running? I mean, if you put cool runnings, Run Lola Run, while playing the song Running in the 90s, while watching Runner Runner, then it still wouldn't be as cool as free running, man. Seriously, look at that shit. No, no, it was a joke. Please, no. <laughs> Well, I guess that's what you call a running joke. Ah! Jesus! One thing I do have to clarify, because I feel like the people who know the subject are screaming at me, free running and parkour are not the same thing. Apparently, free running is about getting there but showing off while you're doing it, and parkour is about getting there as efficiently as possible. Well, like I said, I can't do both, so I don't really give a shit. The parkour mechanics aren't without their fair share of problems, though. You'll run into segments where you'll hit some stupid invisible walls, or Faith lets go when you really don't want her to, and God damn it, Faith, stop looking down! There is nothing for you there! There's also the occasional game-breaking glitch, and not the type that favors you either. As stupid as some of this stuff can be, some is actually pretty badass. I mean, look at this shit. The game is not as lengthy as some would expect, but it's not terribly short either. It's a nice length to keep you going. If you don't have your running fill after beating it, then there's some time trials you can do. After all is said and done, you think you can run like a pro, right? You think you can outrun just about anything, don't you? But do you think you can outrun yourself? <laughs> Nothing really to be said about time trials. They're not fun. Unless you're into that stuff, in which case, if it makes you feel happy, go and play in that ball pit, little Jimmy. If you're not into ball pits like Jimmy is, then it behooves me to tell you that, well, that's all there is to it. It's a real shame, because this game could have served well with some competitive multiplayer. Now, I'm not saying that all single-player games should have multiplayer, it just... It makes me wonder, you know? However, there is one feature that, while it's not part of the game, I feel it's something that enhances your playing experience, and it's something that I do often. Mirror's Edge is one of those games where you can turn off the in-game music, search up some kick-ass soundtracks, and listen to those while you play. The moments where your music sync up with the game... Oh... Man, it's magic. That's just to give it a more cinematic feel to it if you want. And no disrespect to the original composers of those games, I always finish the game with its own music before playing with my own, because... Well hell man, somebody worked on that music for you to hear it. So, end verdict, do you buy the game or do you not? Considering when DICE decides to release Mirror's Edge 2, pick this game up cheap while you can, because by the time you're gonna see ads for the sequel, the game's gonna cost you like 25 bucks. It may fall short to some expectations, but if you let it, you can have a really fun experience with it. 
So yeah, I'm that one guy, and I'm gonna be running to the emergency room. Ow. 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 Ow.